Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our duel number 193. Add a number to cells with common delimited numbers, power query edition. All right, same question as last week, 192. Siva has a cell with a bunch of numbers separated by commas, and he wants to add another number to all of those. Uh, last week, I did this with BBA, and Mike did it with a let formula, but it could have been done with Power Query. And as Mike and I talked about this, we each had a completely different Power Query way to go. So here's my Power Query solution. I'm going to use Control-T to make this into a table, and then data from table or range. And you see Power Query changes this to scientific notation, so I undo change type, remove that from the applied steps, under add column i'm going to add an index column and from one take this original data and home split column by delimiter they're smart enough to figure out it's a comma but here under advanced options i want to say i want to split it into rows click ok all right so now we have a list of all of those numbers broken out but we know which record they belong to thanks to the index column under add column i'm going to create a custom column call it new total and that's going to be equal to the original plus the value to add click OK all right so we originally had 1444 want to add 400 1844 down in record 2 1190 add 300 1490 that's working great at this point we don't need these columns anymore right click and remove columns all right now this is the point, if I had DAX, I'd be using the concatenate X function. I learned this one uh, because it didn't work the first time. I'm going to take that new total, completely counterintuitive. Those are numbers, clearly. I'm going to transform that from type any to type text. And then I'm going to group by the index column. And I'm going to create a new dummy column. And the operation is going to be summing that text values in new total. And of course, this isn't going to work. But what it is going to do for me is it's going to get me a step up here in the formula bar that I can edit. There's my dummy. I'm going to change list.sum to text.combine. That's the function I need. That's the equivalent to the DAX concatenate X. Uh, it's not available in the user interface, but by using the sum function, I can then get to the point where I can edit that. Now, text.combine has a second argument where we get to say what the delimiter is. So, in quotes, a comma, click away. There we are. <laughs> okay, so for record number one, 1844, 1845, 1846, looks great. I don't need the index column anymore. I'll remove that. Home, close and load. I want it to go on the same spreadsheet. So right here into an existing worksheet. We'll put it right next to the old data right there. Click OK. And there it is. Power Query, just editing one line in the formula bar, everything else straight from the user interface. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. All these steps created with the user interface and one edit is probably going to calculate more quickly and efficiently than my single column solution. Nevertheless, let's check this out. We're going to do this with a single formula. Now, I already have this converted to an Excel table. I could come up to From Table, but I already have the button added to the Quat. Of course, you can right click any button and add to the Quick Access Toolbar. So now, all I do is hit the Alt key and that's the number 9, so it's Alt-9. And I get that table inside of the Power Query Editor. I'm going to change the name and delete this step. We don't want it as a number. Now I go up to Add Column, Custom Column. And when I use the Custom Column dialog box, it's going to add a new step here. And it will also add the function table.addColumn. And we'll see it up in the formula bar. And what that function does is that it will iterate over each row in the table and perform some action. What we want to do is split by the delimiter comma 
to get a list of numbers that we can use to add the number from the value to add column. The new column, we'll call it new text. And guess what? Right inside of table.addColumn, we'll use another function, table.split. Now, this is the name of the column. We can see it in the table. So because we're inside of table.addColumns, we're allowed to just list the column name in square brackets. And then we comma, and the delimiter will be in double quotes, a comma. Now, this will create a list for each row in this table. So when I click OK, we have created a list in each row in the table. Now think about this. In the Excel worksheet, we're allowed to have numbers and text and dates. But over here in Power Query, we're allowed to work on many different objects, including a list like this, tables, records, and many other types of objects. Now we have our list that is being created by the table.addColumn function. Now the keyword each means that table.addColumn is running a custom function for each row in the table that we created. So far, all we have is text.split. Now because we use the keyword each, we're allowed to simply put the column name in square brackets. For now, that will work. The next step is we need to convert this list, which means for each cell, we're going to be doing a second iteration on the actual list. So after the keyword each, we're going to type list.transform, open parentheses. There's the list. I'm going to come to the end in backspace and then type a comma. And notice the second argument of list.transform requires a function. That means we are going to end up getting in trouble because we're iterating once with table.addColumn, and now we're iterating a second time. Now, because we're iterating and list.transform, we can use each for the time being. And if I'm using each, I can use the shorthand underscore to get each item from that list. Now, each of these items is considered text. And if we need to add an actual number, that's not going to work. In Power Query, unlike the Excel worksheet, the operation of adding will not convert a text number to a number. So we're going to have to explicitly convert these text items to a number. And the function we can use is number.from, open parentheses. The underscore gets each item from that list, close parentheses. Now, so far, we can get away with the two each keywords because the underscore is acting on table.split. And that original column is working with table.addColumn. So when I close parentheses, close parentheses, and hit Enter, now if we look at our list, we can't visually tell that it's a number, but it is. So the list in this row. They're all numbers, and we simply need to add the 505. So we come up to the formula bar, and we're going to try after number.from plus, and we use our field access operators to get to a particular field. And it's case sensitive, so we have to spell everything in case correctly. And here's the problem. Everything that comes after this each has to be acting on text.split. And that value.add, that's a column in this table that table.addColumns is governing. This is where the two keywords each get in our way. So instead of using the shorthand, we'll explicitly define a variable for this function in table.addColumn. We define a variable with parentheses. We're going to call this variable OT inside parentheses. And then the go to operator is equal greater than. So now, instead of using each and just putting the actual column name, we have to preface whatever columns we use with that OT. And the advantage is obvious. When we define an explicit variable, we're allowed to use the columns from the outside table anywhere in our formula. Each is just when you want an easy way to iterate and you're not going back and forth between multiple iterators. So now, if I come to the end, close on list.transform, close on table.addColumn, there's the new numbers. Now, these are numbers. And if we're going to use the text.combine function, they cannot be numbers. So now we use text 
dot from. And then right after the column, the outside column, I close parentheses. Now if I hit Enter, we won't see anything different. But now I'm allowed for that full list of text items. Text.combine, open parentheses. And very carefully at the end, comma, and the second argument for text.combine, double quotes, comma, and double quotes. Close, close, and there's our formula. Now I can right click, remove other columns, home, close and load, close and load to existing sheet, that cell, click OK. And there, with a single column, a single formula, we have added a number to a text string and then recombined everything into a single cell. Now, ultimately, the problem with a single cell formula is we're doing lots of iterating, including iterating down this table, and then for each row in the table, iterating. And sometimes formulas like that will take longer to calculate than using the user interface. Now, for this example with a small data set, it's no problem. But on bigger data sets, it can be a problem. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. You know, Mike, once long ago, I was at the Model Off Championships, and they had a little game where whoever wrote the shortest formula uh, was the winner. And they were playing for like, I don't know, $30,000 or some big number, right? So I love that a lot of people commented on your channel and on my channel with their favorite methods, and I kind of have arranged them here. Um, your Power Query definitely wins. It's, it's just an awesome Power Query. It's interesting, though, we both saw this, this solution from Abiola David, and uh, we both simultaneously on Tuesday released a video showing that method. People watching your channel should go check this out. People watching my channel should go check this out. Uh, probably the one that ran circles around both of us. But really, no matter how long your solution was, everyone who sent in a solution, you're a winner because Siva had this problem, didn't know how to solve the problem. And we've all come up with 15 different solutions here uh, that will solve that problem, right? So you know, thanks to everyone who commented. And uh, Mike, this was another great two-week duel uh, just that shows how awesome Excel is, all these different ways. Uh, to solve this problem. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. Oh my, it's Dueling Excel time. Stand by.